Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Sophie. I'm the founder of Agnes London. I upload videos all about sustainability, making my own clothes, upcycling, sewing, and that kind of thing. So a previous video I made was following one of the Merchant and Mills patterns to make the Otterline jacket. Seems that loads of you loved that video. I got so many comments on it and lots of you found it helpful. And I really enjoyed making it. I love the Merchant and Mills patterns. Their instructions are so easy to follow. So I decided to have a crack at another one of their patterns. So in today's video, I am gonna be showing you my process of making the Harleen dungarees. So I brought this pattern from Merchant and Mills. It says it is skill level intermediate and I've wanted some more dungarees for a while now. So when I saw this pattern, I was like, do you know what, why not just make them myself using this pattern? This video is not sponsored. I just really like their patterns and their fabrics and everything. So I brought the pattern and then they sell a little hardware kit on their website as well. So I also brought the hardware kit, which has got two sliders, two clips and six June buttons in it also. So that's good because that meant that I didn't have to like figure out what other extra bits I needed. I could just buy it all in one little kit. And then I also bought the fabric from Merchant and Mills for this really nice green cord to make the dungarees out of. So yeah, I'm really excited. And if it goes well, I may also try and make them in a black twill as well. We'll see how, how easy it is to do. So like with the Otterline video, I'm just gonna film the whole thing and show you my step-by-step. -step. And yeah, I mean, normally they have instructions in these which are really, really helpful. And I think they have them. So yeah, it comes with the step-by-step -step instructions. So if you are an intermediate sewer, like these are generally really easy to follow and just explain things really clearly. So I will just be, making along with the instructions and I'll give you my like kind of review of it as I go along. Let's get into the video and I can't wait to get started making these dungarees. I'm so excited for them. Okay, so unlike last time when I made the jacket and I just cut out the size I wanted from the Merchant and Mills pattern, this time I decided to trace the pattern out beforehand with pattern paper. Therefore, if I want to make smaller sizes or larger sizes in future, I still have like my master copy available. So I traced out a size 14, which is a size bigger than I would normally go for, but obviously being six months pregnant at the moment, I was hoping that this would allow space for the bump. As always, I was laying out the largest pattern pieces first, which in this case was the legs. And this cord fabric is directional. So if I brush it up, it's gonna look a different shade to if I brush it down. So I made sure that all my pattern pieces were laying the same way, facing in the same direction, and we're all cut out in that same direction. So I didn't get any two-tone looking effect. This meant that I had to carefully plan out my lay plan before cutting out the fabric. So I laid everything out, pinned everything down before I cut a single thing. And then, so once everything was laid out and I was happy with my lay plan, I cut everything out, making sure to mark on any notches as I go. And then I used my tailor's awl to mark out any drill holes. So there are lots of drill holes on this pattern for things like buttons and stuff like that. And then I put all my offcuts aside because I'm going to use them for another project. So here's me just marking out these holes that are marked on the pattern with stars. So pushing it all the way through. And then I used the Scanfill organic cotton thread in green. I used this for the whole project, even the top stitching and everything. It was possibly a little bit too green, but actually it doesn't matter. Like I barely notice it now my dungarees are made up. So the first step was to do the top stitching on the front pocket. Always makes me a little bit nervous when top stitching is the first step of any project. I feel like I need some time to warm up before I'm doing things that are actually gonna be seen. So yeah, it was thinking four rows of top stitching in total on the front pocket. And then once that was done, the next step was to press the edges of the pocket in and press the edges of the pocket over for the top pocket and also for the back pockets as well. So yeah, once I pressed the top of the pocket over, I was just stitching that down like so, and then repeating that on the back pockets as well. Next up, we've got the front bib panel. So this pattern has a one and a half centimeter seam allowance on it. I just by habit, I always sew with a one centimeter. So I'm just getting my tape measure out just to check my measurements here, just to make sure that I am actually sticking to the pattern. And then I had to trim off a little bit of the seam allowance at the top and the bottom 
to reduce the bulk when like turning or folding over seams and things like that so yeah just a couple of centimeters at the top and the bottom as per the instructions and i'm just going to show you this once because do this on literally every seam but the instructions said to finish the seams with a zigzag or overlocking i only have white thread for my overlocker so i chose to finish the seams with a zigzag it's not the neatest, it does kind of do the trick, but as I was making for myself, then I didn't mind it too much. If I was making this for someone else and wanted a professional finish, I probably would use the overlocker because the seam still frays underneath it. And then the front bib has two diagonal sides, which are lightly to stretch because they are cut on the bias. So I just stay stitched them to hopefully stop them stretching. And as again, with all seams, these dungarees have a lot of top stitching on them, which gives them that really nice utility look. So pressed all the seams over to, I think it was the right side. And then I did two rows of top stitching down the seam as well. And then I stitched the top of the, now the top of the bib over. And then here's the most nerve wracking part, which attaching the front pocket onto the front bib. So I pinned it in place, measured to make sure that it was straight, it was equal distance from the top and from the bottom at both sides of the pocket. And then I'm just going around very close to the edge of the seam, using a point on my presser foot to guide me around to keep me straight. So I go all the way around, then when I get to the end, I go across a less than a centimetre and then I go back all the way around to finish the two rows of top stitching, to finish the double row of top stitching. So the instructions do say not to back tack your seams when you're doing top stitching. I do this because I think you can't really see the tell the difference, especially on this cord fabric, it's quite forgiving. I think on these seams, I didn't back tack. I just left the edge of the seams and then I pulled the top thread through to the other side and knotted at the, high, at the back of the fabric. Next up is the back legs. So first of all, they have a tiny little dart in them at the top. So I've marked that out already with notches and I believe I've marked the end of the dart with a drill hole. So I'm just sewing the darts up Apologies for the slight change of light. I got the urge to carry on doing my dungarees late at night once it had gone dark. So, And then already marked on the back panels was the positioning of the pocket. So I'm just lining that up with the drill holes and also making sure that the dart is smoothed out. I possibly should have pressed the dart before doing this so it was flatter. So then the same method of just doing the two rows of top stitching around the pocket pocket seam has been pre-pressed one centimeter over which makes it much easier to get a neater finish on these pockets all the way around so yeah I'm doing that on both back pockets so far so good the instructions are fairly easy to follow understand what I'm doing I had to do very similar pockets to these on the otterline jacket as well so I'm feeling fairly confident doing them so that's what my pocket looks like once it's done so once both pockets are sewn on while I was here I decided to just sew up the crotch seam Again, one and a half centimetre seam allowance. Then next step is the front. So we're starting off with the fake fly. I'm just doing a zigzag stitch all the way around the edge of that just to finish the edge. And stitching that onto the right side of the trousers. So as you can see, I'm just gonna top stitch that from the right side and I've already got drill holes marked on to mark the shape that I need to sew around. And also I can kind of feel where the fake fly is underneath it. So I kind of know where the edge is. Because this fabric's quite thick, I'm just reducing the bulk of seams at times just by trimming one down halfway. And now for the front crotch seam. making sure to match up the darts as I go along and just sewing around with a one and a half centimetre seam allowance. 
and again zigzag stitching the edge and then as I'm going to do with most of my seams I am just in a double row of top stitching all the way down just stitching the seams over to one side which actually helps make it look neater on the inside as well now for the pocket bag so I don't know whether it's because I was sewing this at late night but this was definitely the step that I got most confused with and had to do several times so yeah they have two pieces for this the kind of edge of the pocket and the pocket bag they zigzag stitched the diagonal end and then went over that again zigzag stitching it down Yeah, I'm just stitching it in place here. So this really confused me when I was doing it. And then once I'd done one, obviously it came together and it made complete and utter sense, but it very much confused me in the meantime. So now that lines back up with the front trouser leg and then I can stitch down the edge of my pocket. So normally I make my own patterns myself and I definitely think by buying and making other people's patterns like Merchants and Mills makes me a better pattern cutter because I get to see different techniques, etc. And also it gives me a little bit of a refresher on how to do things. So yeah, I really enjoy making other people's patterns, especially these Merchant and Mills ones, which have such fantastic in-depth instructions. So once I've stitched the pocket bag to the front trouser, I'm just turning it the right way through and then top stitching the edge of the pocket. And then this bit was a little bit confusing, but again, once I'd done it once, it made perfect sense. So it's basically folding the pocket bag and there were notches and stuff, for example, and then I'm French seaming the bottom of the pocket bag. So I'm just doing half a centimeter seam allowance with the wrong sides together. And then turning that through and doing a one centimeter seam allowance with the right sides together to completely seal that raw edge in the bottom of the pocket bag. So yeah, this was the step that mainly confused me the most just because it's something that I haven't done before. And then I just stay stitched the pocket bag in place along the top, around the waist. And then for a couple of centimeters either side, I'm just stitching down the edge of the pocket opening, leaving enough space to be able to get my hand into the pocket. And these are going to be the buttonhole extensions, I guess they're called. So just stitching them down and into place. And then what I need to do now is stitch the top of the front onto the trousers of the front. So I'm making sure to line up my center seam so that the top stitching all lines up when they're attached together. And I'm just sewing them together with a one and a half centimeter seam allowance. So pretty straightforward and at this stage it really feels like my dungarees are starting to come together. And then there's also a facing to the front waistband as well. So I pressed over the top centimetre of the facing and then I stitched the bottom on to the front bib and the front trousers. So yeah, just making sure to kind of secure the trousers in between the uh, facing and the top bib as well and then because I've pressed that I've pressed that top edge of the waistband down it's nice and easy to just go along and sew I've also pressed the sides of the pocket bib over one centimeter and then one centimeter again and then I'm just doing another double row of top stitching on these This is the button extension for the back. So I'm just, that's gonna get attached to the back trousers. So I just finished the edge off with the zigzag stitch again, and then I'm stitching that on to the sides of the back trousers. And now for the back bib as well. So just stitching that down the middle. Again, trimming some seam allowance down to make it easier when folding over and top stitching the seam, of course. And then I had to do a little stay stitch diagonally across about one and a half centimeters away from the edge. 
and trim that down right down to the stay stitch. Another step that I found a little bit tricky was pressing and trimming the back straps because you have to do something different on the right and on the left. But again, it was the kind of thing that once I'd done it, I was like, ah, oh, cool, that makes sense. So I've trimmed off the excess seam allowance where it said and pressed a bit back where it needed to. And then I'm lining them up at the bottom, crossed over with each other. And then I am stitching at the edges of the strap. I've pressed them over one centimeter and pressed them over one centimeter again. And then I'm just stitching them down and top stitching together at the bottom of the straps. So they're gonna kind of cross over at the back. A double layer of top stitching on each side and then so now I've got my I've done my back straps and I've done my back bib I'm gonna attach those two together so this was a little bit fiddly and it was kind of hard to get flat but actually it worked out in the end luckily this fabric is quite bulky so again it's really forgiving of any slight mistakes but that's where the stay stitch and the slit comes in in the back bib as well just makes this step a little bit easier so there we are we want like a nice neat triangle so I'm trying to trim some of the seam allowance down trying to make sure that the fabric sits as flat as possible and then I'm going to do a double layer of top stitching over that V as well so next step is to attach the top bib to the trousers so I'm just pinning that all the way along So it took me about three days to make these dungarees, but mainly because the camera battery kept dying or I kept running out of memory on my camera. I could definitely could have done it in a day had I not been trying to film every step, especially once you've got the tops and the trousers attached at the front and the back, you really start to feel like your dungarees are coming together. So now I'm just stitching the pocket extent, the pocket, why do I keep saying that? The button extension over, trimming those seam allowances down and then turning them through the right way to give me those pocket extensions. Okay, so here's the next step that was slightly frustrating. I'm now just turning over one centimeter and another centimeter to finish off the edge of the back bib and the straps as well. So at this point, the instructions said to check your straps fit through your hardware. And obviously I'm thinking I'm making a Merchant & Mills pattern and using Merchant & Mills hardware, so obviously they're gonna fit. So I did not check stupidly. And then when it actually came to attaching my hardware to my straps, I found out that my straps were way too wide. That was slightly frustrating, but probably completely user error there. So now I'm just attaching the legs together. So at this point, I thought that I was actually running out of thread. So what I decided to do was sew the inside seams of the legs together and zigzag stitch them but I decided not to top stitch them because I thought that would use too much thread and I would come back to that stage later on. I've definitely made this mistake in the past where I have thought I would come back and top stitch an inner seam and once you've done the outer seams you cannot get back in to top stitch your inner seams so do not make the same mistake I did and just carry on and top stitch your inner seams. So now I'm sewing up the outer leg seam and I didn't go all the way to the top here. You're not meant to anyway, you would go up to like just a couple of centimeters past the pocket opening. But anyway, I didn't go all the way up to the top because I wanted to try them on first of all and check that they wouldn't be too tight around my bump and to see if I needed to let it out anywhere in order to make room for the bump. Turns out they fit perfectly. So I carried on and stitched all the way up and then I'm just stitching in the channel of the seam to stitch the button extension down. And then I'm just catching the front and back of the button extensions together and just stitching them together at the bottom for a couple of centimeters. Now to hem my dungarees, these were obviously gonna to be too long for me, like all patterns of trousers are way too long for me. So I just folded them over a couple of centimeters and a couple of centimeters again, and then top stitch around the edge. 
but I knew that I really like the rolled up look of dungarees so I really didn't bother shortening them or anything because I knew when I wore them I will just roll them up anyway so yeah really easy just hemming the trousers and now to start attaching the hardware so yeah I ended up having to make my straps a bit narrower to fit these on and as you can see they're still a little bit big So I'm putting both pieces on and then I'm just going to stitch the edge of the strap down to finish it off. There we go and then I have my adjustable straps. And next up for the buttonholes. So I have the buttonhole function on my machine. So I just did normal buttonholes, it's like a four step process with the buttonhole foot. So yeah, I did the four buttonholes on the sides of the dungarees. That was pretty easy, just making sure, I just made sure that they were equal distance apart on both sides. And I'd also measured my button as well to make sure that the buttonholes were gonna be long enough. Now, another thing is these buttons came in the hardware kit. They didn't come with any instructions on how to put them on. So I just kind of used my initiative and I marked a hole for them using my tailor's awl and then pushed the back of the button hole through and just hammered it down. So I'm doing this on a tea towel because I was really worried about hammering the top of the buttons and like ruining the pattern on the top of the buttons. So this is my finished dungarees on. Yeah, they fit well around the bump. I probably wouldn't have wanted them too much smaller. Once I've had the baby, what I might do is move the buttons. So that'll do, do up tighter and also take the legs in as well. I think this panel possibly stretched a bit while I was sewing. So yeah, I'm not sure what I could have done to prevent that. So I think I'm just gonna have to live with it now. But yeah, I'm really happy with them. They are super comfy. They're nice and baggy and yeah, I'm really happy with how they turned out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making these dungarees. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment and let me know what you thought. And let me know if you're making your own Harleen dungarees. I'd love to hear about people that are doing the same projects. And I'll be back next week with another video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any more videos like this one. See you next week.